And this other type of triangulation is the so-called Delaunay triangulation. And this relates to the Voronoi diagram that we learned about in the previous lecture. So let's recall what the Voronoi diagram is. If we have a set of n points in the plane, then the Voronoi diagram is the subdivision into Voronoi cells, edges and vertices. And the Voronoi cell of an input point or a site is the set of all points in the plane that are closer to this site than to any other site. And what you want to do is compute this Voronoi diagram and then take its dual graph. A dual graph you get by placing a vertex in every face and then connecting them if they share an edge. So formally for our Voronoi diagram the dual graph is defined as follows. The vertex set of our graph is the point set P. In the Voronoi diagram we have one cell or one face for every point. Here the points are our vertices. And then we have an edge between two vertices if the corresponding Voronoi cells share an edge. And this gives us the dual graph of the Voronoi diagram. And the Delaunay graph of a point set is the straight line drawing of this dual graph. So let's have a look at an example. We have our point set here and this is our Voronoi diagram of this point set. And this is called the Voronoi diagram because it was invented by Georgi Fyodosevich Voronoi in Tsuravki, which was now the Ukraine. Now oh, the dual graph of this is take all these points and connect them if the corresponding cells share an edge. So if I look at this cell here, for example, this is the corresponding point, and it shares an edge with this cell, this cell, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So we ha must have an edge between this vertex and all these marked vertices here. And the Delaunay graph is just take this dual graph and draw all these edges as straight line segments. And this is called the Delaunay graph because it was invented by Paris Nikolaevich Delaunay, who was also a Russian mathematician. Note that the Delaunay graph doesn't have to be a triangulation. If we move this point slightly so that all these four points lie on the same circle, then we have here a Voronoi vertex of degree 4. And then that means that we don't have a triangle here, because now we only get a cycle of length 4. So the Delaunay graph contains some edges, but it is not necessarily a triangulation yet. Instead, we will call all triangulations Delaunay that contain the Delaunay graph as a subgraph. So one Delaunay triangulation would be this one, and another one would be this one. Before we can do that, we first have to prove properties on this Delaunay graph that we get. In particular, we first have to prove that it is plane, so that it's crossing free. Let's try to do that. We want to recall a property of the Voronoi edges. If we have two cells that correspond to two sides P and Q, then we have an edge between P and Q in the Delaunay graph, if and only if there is an edge between those cells in the Voronoi diagram, and we have a Voronoi edge, if and only if there is some closed disk that contains these two sides on its boundary, and no other point on its boundary or in its interior. Now let's say that C is the center of this disk, and we have these two edges, SPQ and SQP, between P and the center and between Q and the center. Then, now we want to assume that there is a crossing. So we have any other edge that is in our Delaunay graph, UV, that crosses the edge PQ. And they have to cross in some point here. So this gives us two triangles. The first triangle PQ with the center of its disk, and then this triangle UV and the center of their disk. Since there is an edge, there also has to be some disk that contains U and V on its boundary and no other point on its boundary or its interior. So, U and V cannot lie in the disk of P and Q because we have this edge. That means U and V also cannot lie inside this triangle between P, Q and the center C. So the only way that we have this crossing between V, U and P, Q is that this edge also crosses another point of this triangle. 
Now symmetrically also P and Q cannot lie inside the disk of U and V. So we also must have another crossing between PQ and the triangle of UV. That's exactly the same argument. So now we have two triangles that intersect in exactly three points. That's not possible. They have to intersect in an even number of points. So there has to be even one more intersection. And since the segment PQ has already two intersections, UV already has two, the, segment, the other intersection has to involve these four blue edges only. So there is one intersection between one of these two blue edges and one of these two blue edges. But all these blue edges, if we look at the first picture again, they are defined by a side and the center of the circle. And this, the center of the circle lies on the Voronoi edge. That means that this edge SPQ has to go from one Voronoi cell to its boundary. So except at the end of it, it completely lies inside a Voronoi cell. So this edge completely lies in the cell of Q, this edge completely in the cell of P, the other two edges are completely in the cells of U and of V. And that means that they can only intersect at their endpoints. But that means that they have to intersect in the center, so that both disks have exactly the same center, and then not both disks can be empty. That means that all the vertices have to lie on the same circle. And that we already said is not possible. So here we have a contradiction. And that means we cannot have a crossing between P, Q and U, V, so the graph is plain. And this way we can now define when we have an edge. And that we do exactly the same as we had for the Voronoi vertices and Voronoi edges. If we have a finite point set, then three points are vertices of the same face in the Delaunay graph, if and only if there is a Voronoi vertex. So that means there is some disk that contains these three points, maybe even more, on its boundary, but none other side in its interior. And we have an edge, if and only if there's a Voronoi edge. So there is a disk that contains exactly these two sides on its boundary and no sides in its interior. And then, like I told you earlier, a Delaunay triangulation is a triangulation that has the Delaunay graph as its subgraph. Or there's another way to define it, which is directly. If we have a point set and any triangulation, then it is Delaunay if for every triangle of this graph it holds that the interior of its surrounding circle is empty. And this is the so-called empty circumcircle property. I briefly want to show you a demo of this again from Desmos.com. We have four points here that we can move around. Then I can turn on the circles for every triple of these points. So the green one is between these three points, the purple between these three, and so on. And as I move it around, you can see a change. And the circles are filled if there is no point in its interior. And the brown one here, for example, is not filled because the red one lies in its interior. And then that tells us here, this circle is empty, so there has to be a triangle between these three. This circle is empty, so there has to be a triangle between these three. And that's exactly the Delaunay triangulation that we get here. And if I move this vertex, if it would be possible to, for me to do this precisely, then at some point none of these two edges would be here. But you can see here it flips over and now we get the other edge in the Delaunay graph. And somewhere in between here, none of these two are in the graph. And that means that they are both edges we can add to get a valid Delaunay triangulation.